good morning. So you might notice today is not where I'm usually standing. It is the same room though. So today's topic is to stop collecting junk. And the reason is because, so I mentioned that me and my husband have been trying to fix up the house. Part of that is we're wanting to start our family and the way that everything looks, we're probably gonna start our family while we're in this house. That means prepping, which means both of our junk needs to go. And by junk, I mean things that we've collected over time, things that take up space, maybe doubles of things. Like when we moved in together, we, honestly, yeah, we both had a microwave. I was like trying to remember because it's been a while. We both had a microwave. You don't need two microwaves. So what ended up happening is I want to say that my sister moved out of her apartment with my other sister and needed her own microwave. So I handed it over. What's happened to it from there? I don't really know. Maybe she still has it. But we started to slowly get rid of some of the obvious stuff. So like the junk that we had that was doubled, like the pots and the pans and spatulas and stuff. We got rid of some of the older ones, the ones that had gotten melted with age and then kept some of the newer ones. We went through stuff that we didn't need. We were gonna throw out some of the bed stuff, but it ended up being that we just had to clean out the guest room, which was the box room, which was a whole conversation we're not having today. <laughs> And we made that a guest room. It fits perfectly with the two beds in there. So that means we can have guests over and they can stay here and it's not a big deal. And so we've just been slowly kind of cleaning and slushing out. So our first big project was the kitchen. And we got the kitchen done. It looks amazing. I'm super excited about it. And then the tree fell on my car. And we've mentioned this because I mentioned to the rental car that I have right now that I still have. It still makes me really nervous. <laughs> but we finished the kitchen and then that happened it set us back a little bit so we weren't able to kind of keep up with doing some of the bigger projects we had to save for that we did it's in the shop we're in the next phase uh so we decided the other day mostly because my husband was on the wi-fi and it wasn't working very well and so he went to go fix it we ended up rewiring not really rewiring but like reorganizing all of the wires and everything in the living room and we cleaned it up and it's in progress now which is something that i didn't think we were going to be doing for a while but it ended up picking up so we're doing that now and then so i came in and i'm kind of been in a better mood this week i feel a little bit more energized i didn't do a video friday partly because um my husband being the paranoid he is he's got this whole long list of things that he wants me to be doing before while we're conceiving pregnant all of that stuff things like when you're pregnant you can't have sushi you can't have things that are undercooked you can't have a lot of caffeine you can't have certain medications because of the way it affects your body so i told him it would be easy as you can tell from my face it was a mistake <laughs> so i told him it would be easy and i've been trying to do the whole pregnancy diet for a while so i stopped taking a lot of things like I used to just take like melatonin to help me sleep. Uh, I have pretty bad allergies, so I would take allergy medication. I had been drinking coffee every day. That's his fault, not mine, because I didn't used to drink coffee before I met him. Uh, I love medium rare steaks. I love sushi. I love soft boiled eggs. Not very frequently, but usually I like a ramen. And so suddenly, I had to figure all that out. So Friday, I was dealing with the first caffeine induced headache because I hadn't had coffee in two days and I got a really bad headache. <laughs> so I was, I was in a puddle of mess and then we decided, okay, so we really want to try this successfully and not decide, well, I guess I'm just not having kids. <laughs> we're, we were going to start weaning. So instead of cutting, quitting cold turkey, I ended up, we're switching to something like tea that has less caffeine and then you just slowly drink less of it over time and then eventually you can switch to things like decaf and it you can still enjoy your hot beverage but it's not caffeine and it's not as bad for you. So I had a really bad caffeine headache on Friday and that's why we're here. So today, stop, stop holding on to your junk is really what it's all about because every time we start one of these new projects we're always going through things and start to grab stuff and say keep it throw it keep it throw it keep it throw it and it's it's really frustrating after a while with my stuff i know what i can keep and what i can throw like if i grabbed 
this little thing, it's the first thing I saw, I know what it is, which if you don't know, it's a lip balm. We still have a good amount on there and we use it like every night because my lips always get chapped. So at the end, when I go to sleep, I try not to wake up with chapped lips. It happens anyway. I open it, put some chapstick on, put it down, go to bed. It's just become part of my routine. So I know that it's not a throwaway item. It's not just like a toy that's taking up space. It does something. Granted, it's a little big and I might try to really hard to keep it <laughs> when it runs out. But point remains, it's a tool. It's still useful. So that stays. Something like this. You can't really see some of the stuff because the lighting. This is Aquifer. It, I use it for my tattoos and I'm sure I've mentioned in some videos I have a couple tattoos. So when you get a tattoo, you're supposed to use this to help kind of rehydrate it and make sure it doesn't like crack and hurt too bad. So I recently got a tattoo. So I have this by my bedside. Does it need to stay by my bedside? No. So I know it gets put away, but it's not useless. Um, people also use this, I want to say for like diaper rash. Maybe. It's supposed to relieve chapped skin. So it's just essentially lotion. It's just thick lotion. It's a healing ointment. So it's not useless. It'll have use, uses later. But that just means that maybe I don't want to keep it by my bedside. If you're curious where I'm standing, I'm going to show you all of the mess that's here. And I try not to move the camera too much, but we're going to do it today. So... We all like to hold on to all of these things that don't... All of these things that don't matter. Like, what is one of these things? Well, that's got to use. Okay. Yes, I have a fidget spinner. I want to say that my dad got this from one of his coworkers who was making them at the time. And I really like it, mostly because it makes like a sound when it... I don't know if I can make it... To... You can kind of see it. It's a little whistling. I like it. And so I kept it. However, you can see that it's broken. And so I should throw it away. But my daddy got it for me. <laughs> it was just one of those things that my dad got for me. And I get really attached when people give me gifts that I really like. If it's like a t-shirt that's two sizes too big, sorry, I'm probably going to get rid of it at some point. But if it's like something like this that was just... He thought of us and he got us these, we got all these. This was my mom's, but she doesn't like the whistling sound. She liked a, a red one that was texturized. So then I ended up with this one. But yeah, I don't know. I like it. I feel like I can't throw it away because it's cool. It's Batman. So fortunately it's a smaller item. So it's not like it's going to take up a ton of space. So I don't get rid of it. But that means I also have to find a place for it. Moving on to the next thing. So... I have my one-a-day vitamins right here because if I don't have them by my bedside, I won't take them. And the whole getting healthy thing that includes taking daily vitamins. So we're trying, we're trying stuff. And so I have all of these pills by my bedside and I don't take most of these. We've got the melatonin. Uh, we like to take Benadryl at night when the, our sinuses, because we both have really bad allergies, go figure. We like to take them when our allergies get really bad, which is usually like for him when it rains, if it rains for like a week straight, he's allergic to mold. So like that'll act up. So he'll usually take it that night or me when it's been really, really dry outside and it's really dusty, I'm allergic to dust. I'll take it. But I keep it by my bedside because if it's by his bedside, cause he's the one that's taking this right now. Remember I'm on the pregnancy thing. So I'm not, tr I'm trying not to take some of the stuff you're not supposed to take, which that is either a question mark item or a don't take item. <laughs> so, but if I leave it by his bedside, he'll forget and never take it and then wake up in the morning and be like, I don't know why everything hurts. It's because he didn't take your medicine. He didn't take his allergy medicine yesterday because I didn't take my allergy medicine yesterday. Not because I forgot because I'm not supposed to be. He forgot. So I have all of this stuff by my bedside to remind him to take it. And then I have like five bottles of lotion for no reason. Other than apparently lotion goes on our dresser, which it doesn't. And then we have things like this, which now I have to remember where this came from. And then it's going to get me in trouble. I'm pretty sure that my tia gave me this. So it's really cute. And I really like it. And I'm terrified the cats are going to jump on this and break it. But they haven't yet. But it's also really dusty. Because I haven't been taking care of it. And that's another thing. If you want to keep stuff like this, you're going to have to take care of it. So while I'm rambling about all of this junk that I have to go through, 
the point that I'm trying to make is we carry all of these things from the beginning of our life to the end of our life, things that we say matter to us, and then we put them away in a dark corner to take up space. If it really matters, figure out what to do with it. I have my wedding dress. Will I ever wear it again? Hopefully not because I don't plan to get married again. And I don't foresee being able to fit into it if we ever renew vows later because actually it was a little big, so maybe. But the point is, I it was a one-time event. I got married uh, to my husband, who I love, but I don't see myself wearing that dress again. But I also don't want to throw it away. So instead of piling it in the back of a closet, never to be seen or touched again, my plan is to either put it away neatly in a box to be passed down so that they, my, my kids want to use pieces of it, they can, or to give it to a friend who maybe needs it, or to put it in a shadow box. There are options that I have to use it that don't involve getting rid of it or throwing it away. Because let's face it, wedding dresses are expensive. And yeah, I got a really good deal on this, but I'm also not gonna use it again. So if there's a friend out there that I have who really needs a wedding dress and can't afford it, I've got one that's just sitting there. They fit into it, great. And then there's things like, oh, well, what's a good example? I know it's a good example, but I don't wanna grab it because I wanna get rid of it. So there's this, these little metal figurines that we have that we made. That was the first one we're supposed to make more. There's more in a box that we haven't made. But those can just take up space. And yes, those are nice to keep, but you can give them as a gift. It can be a fun little project, and then you put it away. There are so many things that we'll collect, and you can't keep them all. As much as we want to, we can't. You'll run out of space. So at some point, you have to just slow down, get all of this stuff out, and move on. And that's true for everything in our lives. So as I've mentioned multiple times with my last job is that I lost it and it was really hard on me. But I keep trying to carry that with me, carry that weight, carry that feeling, carrying that rejection ultimately is what it comes down to. Carry that with me from place to place like it belongs to me, like it's important. It's not. It is something that happened to me that I will get over, that I will get better from, that I will learn from, that I'll move on from. And I need to just get it out and get rid of it because it's just taking up space for all of these new and good things that are happening. My new workplace is amazing and it feels like this is where I should have been the entire time. And it, everybody is so kind and they, build teams and they really, really do their best to promote productive relationships. And it's great. And I feel like this is probably where I should have been this whole time. But me carrying this around, feeling like this happened to me, this belongs to me, this experience is important and blah, blah, blah. It's holding me back. It's making me feel like maybe I shouldn't trust anybody because this was happened last time and maybe this, maybe that, maybe, 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 but ultimately it's not. This is a new experience. And me just carrying this experience from my last workplace to my new workplace is just hurting me. And we do that with everything. We do that with old relationships, whether they're like your ex-boyfriend who did this bad thing to you and now you're blaming your new boyfriend for it or old friendships where somebody said that you were annoying or that you had too many restrictions and weren't as much fun to hang out with. You carry that to your new friendships and you're always nervous and you feel like, well, do they think I'm annoying? Do they think that I too much work to hang out with? Why don't they ever call? And it just turns out they're busy and work two jobs. <laughs> we carry all of this junk with us everywhere whether it's physical junk that we carry from our old place to our new place or it's emotional experience junk that you learned from you you got through it but now it's time to throw it away i'm not telling you to forget all the stuff that happened because it made you a better person it taught you something but there is no point to keep carrying it to the next one to the next one 
if all you're gonna do is sabotage your new relationships your new experiences with this idea that that was gospel that everybody's gonna feel that way that that's it's not everyone's different and every experience is different and we got to learn to let stuff go when I was dating my husband I was terrified that he was going to be like the other guys that I dated who eventually were only wanted one thing or thought that my personality was really annoying or really grating or I expected too much from them or I was doing too much or whatever and I almost broke up with him because I thought he was going to be the same as the rest of them and I didn't want to care about him if he wasn't going to care about me and ultimately what happened is he said I was being stupid and he said get over it <laughs> and I'm paraphrasing he didn't say that but the gist of it was that I was overthinking it and so he helped me get past that to realize that he he's not them he's not those experiences and we're really happy together but if I'd have just held on to all of that emotional junk from my last relationship to this relationship I might have ruined it I might have let it go and I never would have known what this would have been like and we all do it all the time every time and we need to stop because the same way that your house will explode with clutter if you keep taking every single thing from your last place to your new place we'll do that to all of our relationships to all of our experiences everything will suddenly be bursting with everything bad that's happened to you you can't enjoy new experiences you can't learn new things everybody is so different and all your experiences are so different that you're just gonna need to make room for some of that if I hadn't gotten rid of all of the old stuff from my old kitchen all the old stuff I got rid of, all the old stuff he got rid of. We wouldn't have room for the new kitchen that we have. And I love our new kitchen. We ended up getting rid of a carpet in the living room, which it sounds so minimal just to get rid of a carpet in the living room. And it brightened up the room so much and I suddenly saw all this potential in it. Imagine what if we did that in our lives. That one thing that we're holding on to that seems so minimalistic, like, well, I can just keep carrying that from relationship, relationship, experience to experience. And we finally get rid of it and suddenly the world seems new and the possibilities are endless. The same way that carpet changed that room, that baggage will change your life. Stop holding on to the junk. Yes, it's okay to hold on to the things like this that are memories that mean something really important. I don't have a lot of these and it meant a lot to me when my aunt gave this to me so I keep it it doesn't take up a lot of room and I try to take care of it but some of the stuff in this trash can is like old junk and stuff that I don't need anymore stuff that if I keep holding on to it it's just gonna collect dust and prevent me from seeing the possibilities thanks for listening